Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Very glad that you could join us once again. I'm joined this morning by Dr. Phyllis Z. She's joining us on the program to talk about the How America Sleeps and Wakes survey. Uh, welcome to the program, Dr. Z. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. A bit of background about yourself. We're here to talk about the uh, How America Sleeps and Wakes survey. Are you a sleep specialist? Indeed, I am a sleep specialist. I'm a neurologist, and I direct the uh, Sleep Disorder Center at Northwestern University. Is sleep something that has always been of interest to you? Is that I was very interested when I was a uh, actually a graduate student in uh, biological rhythms, and of course, the most prominent of these biological rhythms is the sleep wake cycle. So, when I finished my residency, I decided that that's what I wanted to specialize in. Mm-hmm. You know, we hear a lot lately about the importance of uh, a good night's sleep. What constitutes a good night's sleep nowadays? How many hours do we need? Yes, on average, for a general, you know, a general healthy adult, probably need about seven to eight hours of sleep. But that does change uh, depending on the age of the of the individual. For example, younger people, uh, let's say adolescents, they need actually more sleep, probably more like nine hours of sleep. Whereas as we get a little bit older, it still gets around about seven hours instead of maybe the eight hours. So it's really the range, the normal range is between about seven to about nine hours uh, of sleep. And it, it depends on the individual. Some people need a little bit more. Some people need a little bit less. But how do you know is how you feel during the day. Can a person who's been running on five hours, six hours of sleep a night for years suddenly begin a a new sleep uh, habit and gain the benefits? It's never too late, indeed. So if if you're chronically sleep deprived, that just accumulates. I mean, that... uh, the negative impact on health can certainly accumulate. And we know that early on, if you, you know, if there's sleep fragmentation or insufficient sleep, that those are risk factors for the development of, let's say, heart disease or diabetes. And even there's some data now on dementia. So, yes, uh, please, you know, get more sleep. Uh, Any time is better than too late. You know, I mentioned that we hear a lot about the importance of uh, a good night's sleep. We also hear a lot about insomnia. For our listeners who may not be familiar, what is insomnia? Insomnia is a sleep disorder that's characterized by chronic difficulties with either falling asleep or staying asleep and perhaps just waking up too early. And those, that, that, that problem with your sleep actually has to be associated or the consequence is having daytime per- performance issues, other types of impairments, and, uh, and also just feeling not well rested. Now, insomnia not only affects the, in the person who's suffering, it affects those around them. Let's, let's talk about this How America Sleeps and Wakes survey. Who conducted the survey and, and basically why? So the survey was uh, commissioned by ASI to really take a, you know, get a better understanding of the impact of insomnia on, of course, the person who's suffering from insomnia, more from the from a perspective of you know, quality of life, but also what was, I think, quite unique about the survey, which actually I'm quite excited about, is that it really focuses also on the cohabitants that are living, of course, with those who suffer from insomnia. And what they found was that more than eight out of 10 individuals who live with people with insomnia actually bear some of the consequences of having insomnia uh, on their next day on the next day function. So if you're, uh, you know, if your household person sleeps well, very likely the rest of the family is going to be feeling better during the next day and also performing better during the next day. So if I'm understanding correctly, the, the person who's suffering from insomnia, the effects of that sleep deprivation are going to infect the cohabitants and their performance as well? Yes, and certainly their quality of life. So it's if, uh, you know, if you have somebody that you live with who has insomnia and if they get a good night's sleep, it influences the, you know, yourself as far as having a good day. So really 
really it's about waking, you know, having a good night's sleep is about waking up and having a good day. So it's waking up well, right? Waking up ready for the next day. And that is every day because it's a chronic problem. You know, you, it's the insomnia is not a temporary problem. It's a disorder. It's, it's really a chronic problem. So how do you address uh, insomnia? I mean, there are medications, I'm sure. Is there meditation, lifestyle changes, diet? Um, what causes it if, if we know and how can we uh, minimize it or alleviate it altogether? So the treatment of insomnia is, needs to be individualized, of course, to the person because there are various causes, there are various contributing factors uh, to insomnia. Some of that is biological uh, or genetic. Others are perpetuated by lifestyle uh, and also learned behaviors, maladaptive behaviors. So really it's important to uh, discuss and bring the issue of sleep quality of perhaps also insomnia to your, to, you know, to the physician or a care provider so that they can then uh, come up with a plan or treatment plan that addresses the individual issues that may be contributing uh, to insomnia. And as you said, there are many types of treatments, including behavioral types of therapies, cognitive types of therapies, and also, when needed, uh, a, prescri- a, a, a care provider may prescribe a medication, but really has to be individualized. What do you say to the, uh, to the professionals out there who are not sleep uh, experts such as yourself? Um, what should they look for in a patient who's coming in for, say, maybe an unrelated uh, uh, issue, but some of the things that the conversation reveals might indicate uh, a, a sleep disorder? What should the physician do and how do they guide that conversation? Because, you know, sleep, in my opinion, of course, is a pillar, is one of the most important pillars of health because it affects so many domains of both mental and physical health. I think any uh, physician or care provider should be asking about sleep as part of their routine review of systems and saying, are you satisfied with your sleep? How many hours of sleep do you get? When do you go to bed? When do you wake up? And if the patient individual says, well, I, uh, I don't, I'm, I'm dissatisfied, I have problems, then you can go on to further questions and thinking maybe this person has insomnia or another type of sleep disorder, such as sleep apnea. I would also ask them, do you snore? These are, this literally takes 30 seconds and that will at least help you understand whether the patient is suffering also from sleep disorders because most people may not actually go to their doctor on a routine checkup and, and actually even mention uh, sleep. So we have to really ask about it and screen for that. Where can our listeners get some more information about um, healthy sleep habits and more about ESI as well and um, the survey and what you've got going on there at ESI? So there is a really, I think, informative website. It's called dayafterinsomnia.com. And it does provide information about insomnia, but also sleep health. Dr. Z, been a pleasure this morning. Thank you so much for joining us here on Health Professional Radio. Lots of good information. Thank you for having me. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download it, SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.